guys, this is Suzanne from CG Geek, and welcome to a new Blender tutorial. In this Blender tutorial, we're we'll going to learn how to create the uh, monkey head in Blender. <laughs> okay, no, no, we won't be doing that. But uh, in this Blender tutorial, we will be learning how to create custom roads by modeling them and texturing them all within Blender. So this is a custom requested tutorial from my Patreon page, and we're going to be learning how to create roads, like I said, and these roads can be used to fill out any sort of scene or even use them for animation or even game engine. Um, we're going to be learning how to do all of the modeling and texturing all within Blender to create any sort of road you can think of. So custom roads, everything is possible with this tutorial. And we're going to be using some tips and techniques that I didn't even know were possible a week ago. So uh, Blender continues to amaze me with its cool uh, tools. And if you're interested in learning how to use some of these tools, be sure to stick around to the end of the tutorial where I show you guys some of the really cool texture painting techniques that, I, uh, that I've recently learned. But... Without further ado, let's roll the intro and get a move on. Okay, so we're going to start by modeling some basic roads in Blender using a few tips and techniques to make this even easier. And I am going to load in a background image, but you really don't need to. This is just to kind of give you guys an idea of how a road is laid out, just so you guys kind of know the right angles and stuff to put in your roads. But after you kind of get the hang of using it with uh, a background image, you can kind of get rid of the image and continue your road however you want it to be. So I'm just going to enable background images there, add an image, and I'm going to open up my image here. And there's my background image, and I'm just going to scale it up real quick so it's a little bit more appropriate to scale. You guys can obviously change the scale afterwards to whatever you want to match the exact scale you're going for. But just changing the size here, I'm going to go up to about 25, so we're a little bit bigger, and it fills up our scene a little bit better. All right, so with that done, we're just going to use a simple plane to start. So I'm going to go Shift A, add in a plane, and we're going to just line it up with the middle road here. Um, I'm going to just line it up right about there, and then once the origin point is centered, so it's nice and organized. I can close my properties tab now. I'm going to tap into edit mode, grab that plane over to the end here and scale it up a bit larger than our road. So I'm going to go for like the road and the sidewalk all in this. And like I said, you don't need a reference image, but this is just so you guys can kind of get the hang of how a road is laid out, how the curves, you know, how much room to leave for uh, turning lanes and all that. But once you have that uh, laid out, you can continue your road as far as you want and not have to worry about it. So I'm going to grab those two vertices on the end there and pull it all the way to the end of my scene. And with that laid out, you can see that our road reference image is a little bit crooked. So to work with this image, it helps to rotate it just a little bit. So I'm going to go to my rotation here. I'm going to hold shift so I'd rotate it nice and slow. And I'm just going to tilt it until it is lined up nice and square. As you can see, that's a little bit better. Um, it still needs to go a slight bit more. So I'm just going to rotate it a little bit more. I'm going to go to about almost 1, about a 0.9, and then we're lined up nice and good. Just leaving a bit of room on the edges of the road here for our curbs and uh, sidewalks and such. So with our main road lined out like that, what you're going to do is tab into edit mode, and everywhere you want a branching road off, you're going to go control R, and you're not going to put the cut right at the edge of the road, but you're going to put it back right as soon as you see a bit of curvature in the road. So I'm going to put a cut there, and then I'm going to put a cut right about here. Um, and you can do the same thing for any other road cut you want down the road here. <laughs> Get it? Down the road. Um, <laughs> that was terrible. Okay, another one here. Uh, we'll put another one here. And then this vertice needs to be slid down so it's in line with this curve here. This one's already in line. And we'll just drop one more at the end here. All right, so now to get that nice curve in the road, we're going to grab those two vertices here. And I'm going to extrude this and then pull it down all the way until the curve in the road here stops and it comes to be a consistent straight line. So right about here is where the curve in the road stops. So I'm going to stop right there. I'll zoom in here real quick and I'll go control R and put about eight or so cuts in here. Uh, maybe seven or seven would be good. So we'll just put seven cuts right in the middle there. So control R and then click that out. Now I'm going to grab the last two vertices here and I'm going to enable proportional editing right here. You click Enabled, and then I'm going to change the fall off to be Sphere. So you're going to want to choose Sphere for this, and then if I scale it along the x-axis, and then use my wheel to pull it in a bit, you can see we get that exact sort of curvature that is in the road in our mesh here. So I'm just going to scale it in quite a bit, um, again, leaving just about a uh, another meter or so in real-world size, I guess, on either side of the... Uh, the road here, maybe a little bit more, and then I can center it up a little bit, and we get that nice curve. 
So the reason I'm leaving some extra room here, like I said, is so I can put another cut in here later and kind of put the curve in there. Um, you could be going right to this as well and then just extruding it out. So there's, there's different ways to do it, I guess. Uh, it doesn't really matter, but this is just so we have a little bit more room to play with our, uh, our texture paint. So once you have your nice curve there, you can see that looks nice and good. You can extrude your last one out all the way down, not forgetting to turn off proportional editing now that we're done with it. So you can pull it all the way out until another curve in the road comes, like we have right here. I'm just going to scale it down a little bit. And then you would go ahead and do an extrude and pull it down. But here's going to be the cool part. If this road just turned without continuing, I'm going to show you how to do this. We could use the spin tool right here. So the spin tool works around your 3D cursor. So I'm going to right click to place my 3D cursor, actually left click, I'm sorry, uh, right there. And then if I use the spin tool, you can see it spins our vertices 90 degrees around the cursor there. So that works great for putting curves in your roads, such as this right here, to match it right up exactly. And if you had more than a 90 degree angle or less, you would change this value here. And if you needed more quality, you could change the number of steps. Um, for me, I thought nine steps looked good. And so you could just leave it at that and then extrude and continue on. So it's as simple as just placing a 3D cursor. Sometimes you kind of have to play around with the placement of your 3D cursor to get it just right. But you just basically want to line it up with this vertice and then where you want your last vertice to be. And imagine it from that point being swung around. And that's how you get the nice sort of curves in your road. Um, so we can go ahead and finish up the rest of these roads here using that same technique, grabbing the two vertices on either side. Um, let me hit Z to go into wireframe here. This one can come in a little bit. Extruding it. Pulling it out until there's no more curve in the road, and then going Control R, putting a handful of cuts in there, grabbing the last two vertices, enabling proportional editing, leaving it on the fall off mode sphere, and then scaling along the X axis and adjusting the fall off with your middle mouse wheel until it fits just to the end of your selected row of vertices here. And then you'll have your nice curve in your road. And you can continue all the way on, hitting O to turn off proportional editing then and uh, do the same thing everywhere else you have an extra curve in your road. So it's a really cool technique and it's quick and easy so you guys can model as much roads as you want now using this technique. Um, I'm just going to finish up the roads in this scene and then we'll continue on with uh, some more modeling before we jump into texture painting. Okay, so I finished filling out our roads, kind of matching our background image, but again, you don't have to. You can go wherever you want and I continued off the screen here a little bit. Um, and what we're going to do now is we're going to inset the road so we can kind of add that curb to the edge of the road, uh, sidewalks and stuff. Um, and then we can also add something like the uh, medium here you have here, where the curb kind of splits the road here and you have two lanes. So I'm going to show you how to do that as well. But to start, I'm going to tab into edit mode. I have face mode selected. I'm just going to select all the vertices right now. And I'm going to get hit I on my keyboard to insert, or inset, I should say. Um, all of our faces. So because everything we have is selected road, I'm just going to use this and I'm going to inset it a bit until it looks like it matches about where I want my curb to start. So this isn't going to match the background road exactly right now because of the distances we put. We didn't do it exactly to all the roads, but that's fine because we're not um, we're not really following this background image anyways. And you can always tweak the scale a little bit. If I want to, for example, just match this up a little bit, I could scale everything along the y-axis and it would line up a little bit better but I'm not worried about it because the scale of this scene isn't exactly what I'm copying it's gonna be a custom road of whatever I want um, but if you're matching this exactly like I said you could grab these vertices and fit them right to the road okay so with that said and done though I'm gonna show you now how to do something like the medium here um, and after we did our inset now I can go ahead and cut this out so I'm gonna hit K on my keyboard to switch to knife mode and I'm just going to click on the edge here, and then you can see as I drag across, I can click wherever, and it will be putting vertices there. So I'm going to basically cut the shape out of our road here. It's just going to be cut there, a cut here, a cut here, and then all the way across to the end. So right about there. So using this not just as reference, I can hit return now, and you can see that we have these faces basically cut in to our shape here. So that's really cool, and that gives us the ability to leave certain areas of the mesh different than others. Um, and now I'm going to select everything else, so Alt right clicking just to select the length of the roads. And in this case, I'm going to make the roads go down, because usually in a city, the roads kind of go downward. Um, if you're kind of doing like a highway or something, the roads sometimes are built up, 
but in, in the city, the roads are usually a little bit lower than the, uh, the sidewalks and etc. So I'm just going around and alt clicking all of our roads to select the whole road, and then I'm not uh, selecting anything of the sidewalk. So I don't want to bother with the sidewalks. Actually, these vertices at the end here, those can just be deleted if you don't want to uh, see the end of the road, basically. But with all those selected, I'm going to zoom in here so I can get nice and close to see exactly how far I want to go. And I'm going to hit E to extrude, and then Z, so along the Z axis. And then I'm going to hold Shift so we move in a nice gradual motion. And I'm just going to pull it down a little bit. You really don't want to go too far because you have to imagine this being a full road and the, uh, the curb here not being too deep. But with that said and done, you can see we have some depth to our scene now. And uh, the, the medium in the middle there and the curbs kind of show up nicely. And we have some nice uh, sort of definition to our road. So now let's kind of add more of the obvious curb to the edge. So usually you kind of have your sidewalk and then a curb that sometimes is even taller than your sidewalk. So to do this, I'm going to tap to edit mode again. I'm going to grab my edge select and I'm just going to select the edges wherever I want a curb. So as you can see, I'm selecting these edges around here. Um, I have, I'm accidentally selecting the top and bottom. I just want to select the bottom. So I'm going to hide everything on top by just alt right clicking the roads here, like I did before. Um, if you didn't actually unselect them, you could, uh, you could just do that. But I'm just going to grab the roads here all the way across. We just have a few here. And I can just hide these. Now actually, I'm going to go Alt-I to inverse and hide all that. Perfect. So now I just have the flat parts of our road. And this is what I'm going to use for making the curb. So like I said, I want to select the edges here, all around our medium there, and any way you have a curb. So I'm going to go to my reference image here just to kind of see how a normal city has curbs. And you can see along the edges here, especially around the turns and stuff, you have your curb. So I'm going to Alt-Right click and select that whole turn there. And that will give us all the way along here as well. But maybe we don't want the curb down here because this road doesn't look like it has one necessarily. So I can just deselect the curb from this point onwards by using uh, my middle mouse wheel and B and then selecting over it. So I'm going to do the same thing over here then. Oops, just want to select the edge. So Alt Shift click and get just the edge there. And then we have to deselect these sections. Whoops, hitting B. So deselect that, deselect that. Um, and any way you want to curb, you're just going to select that edge. And then I'm going to go along here, right to there. And then over here, oh, wrong edge. Alt, right click, get just the edge. Perfect. Along there. Um, and then anywhere you might be putting like a roadway or something, and you don't want a curb, you would unselect that face. Um, in this case, I want a curb all along here, but not down here. This road doesn't have a curb. Um, and etc. So I'm just selecting all the faces along here that I want to have a curb. And uh, that looks good. Up here, not so much. Right here we want it. Right up to about here. And I can unselect that there. So that will do it for now. Um, we can unselect that one too. That will be all the curbs I need. And as you can see, um, we can edit the curbs later as well. So I don't need to be too picky about it. Um, but with this selected, I'm just going to hit Shift D and then P and separate by selection. So I'm going to tab out of edit mode now, and you can see if I click here, we have all our edges, and we're going to use these edges to add curbs. So I'm going to use a modifier with these. I'm just going to go add modifier, and I'm going to use a skin modifier. So as you can see, it's only working in one spot right now and not everywhere. So to fix this, I just need to tab into edit mode, select everything, click mark root, and then unselect it all, and you can see it's all a nice even size. But of course, it's way too big. So what I'm going to do now is tab into edit mode, have them all selected, and you're going to go Alt or Control A to scale down the size of the skin modifier. So I'm just scaling it down really small. And if I hit Z so we can have a little bit more definition of what's going on here. And also at this point, I like to turn on my, um, my display settings here to give ourselves some ambient, not ambient occlusion, but... Um, well, maybe it's ambient occlusion, I guess. Right here, ambient occlusion and matte cap. So we just get more uh, visible, visible definition of where our lines are lining up. So that helps quite a bit. And then I can go Alt A and continue scaling down until that curb is about the right size. Then you're gonna want to grab everything and grab it along the Z axis to pull it up just higher than our uh, our sidewalks and stuff. And you can see that gives us a nice sort of curb look to our roads just kind of filling them out a little bit, adding a little bit of extra detail. 
So that is uh, going to do it now, guys. That's the modeling. Now it's time for the texturing. So for the texturing part, we're going to um, first do a little bit of unwrapping. So we'll select our main mesh again, um, just forgetting about the curves for now. Tab in edit mode and option H, unhide all of our vertices. Now before I can start the texture painting, I need to give myself a unwrap of our roads. And to do that, I'm just gonna select everywhere the road branches off. So you can see right here, right here, I'm just selecting the row of vertices right before it by alt right clicking. And that looks about right. I'm gonna go control E, mark seam. And that is pretty much it. Right here I have one more, control E, mark seam. And if I split my window here, and I bring up a UV image editor, I'm gonna select them all now, and I'm gonna go U and unwrap. And you can see we have all of our individual roads here unwrapped, but um, it's not really taking advantage of the size of our, uh, our UV map. And one of the reasons is because our center road is about twice as long as all of our other roads. So to kind of even out the scale, I'm gonna put a seam right in the middle here as well to kind of cut our middle road in half just so we can fit it in our UV image map here better. So I'm gonna go control E one more time, mark seam, grab it all, UV unwrap, and now you can see it fits the scene much better. And now if you wanted to, you can do some more scaling and moving around and try to get this even bigger. Um, I might do just a little bit of that by grabbing this one, pulling it over here, rotating it, scaling it a bit. Or actually, we wanna scale them together. So I'm gonna pull it in here and then grab all of them and scale them together and just fit them into this image. The, the bigger you can get them, the better, but um, the more resolution you'll have in your textures, but it can be kind of tricky as well. So that looks good enough for me. And uh, with that said and done, we are ready to start the texture painting phase. So here we go. Uh, I have some textures downloaded and I'll link to all the textures I'll use in the description. But uh, with that said and done, let's start texture painting. Okay, so with our mesh selected, we're gonna switch to texture paint mode and right away you can see that we're missing materials. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna switch to cycles render, just so we're making sure we're in the right render engine. I'm gonna make this window a bit bigger here as well. And then I'm gonna click add paint slot. And we're just gonna use a diffuse color. Now this is where it's gonna depend on how high a resolution you want your textures to be. Um, for this, I'm gonna go 4K. So instead of typing in what 4K would be, I'm just gonna take the 10, 24 here and I'm gonna put a little asterisk next to it and four and hit return and it automatically multiplies it by four to make it 4k so if you didn't know you can do math within blender anywhere there's numbers you can do math with it to save yourself some time so I'm just gonna do that and then I'm gonna give our background color I'm gonna make this mostly white as it just makes it easier to see um, but we're gonna be painting over it so it doesn't really matter and then everything else is good to go we can name it our road texture if we want but uh, otherwise ready to go. So with that I'm gonna go OK and you can see we have our texture here, we have our tools, and uh, this is the main tool we're gonna to be using. We're gonna be using the texture draw and the clone mostly. So I'm gonna show you a few of the different texturing techniques I guess to uh, achieve roads um, nicely in Blender and most of it's gonna be changed in the brush mapping. So this is the different modes you have for using your brush and uh, to start I like to use the stencil. The stencil basically works off a texture, so we have to open a texture now. And I'm gonna do that real quick. You just hit new, let's slide this over here. And then if we went to our texture tab now, we could see if we changed the image texture to brush texture, that we would have an empty slot here for an image or movie. You click open, and then you can open up one of your textures. So for this, I'm just gonna try and find a blank road. Um, right here, I have a pretty blank road. So I'm just gonna open that up, and it's a seamless texture. That's important, as it will blend nicely together then. And as you can see, we have our texture right here. Um, it's in a square shape right now, and the texture I have here is a little bit longer, so that's not ideal, we'll have to change that. Um, but if you click Image Aspect, it does it for you. So we have our texture here now, and basically the way this works is anywhere you have your texture, if you click with the brush, it's gonna put exactly what you see here on your texture behind it. So. Um, it, uh, it's pretty good for getting textures exactly where you want them, and that's why I like to start with this brush. So I'm gonna first turn off our background image now as we don't really need it. It's just getting in the way. And now to kind of change the placement of our stencil, so you don't have to do everything in your viewport, you can change the placement of it by holding down control, and if you right click, you can change the rotation, 
And if you hold down shift, you can change the scale with right click. And then if you just use right click, you can move the placement of it. So basically you can move this wherever you want. You can hold control and move the rotation and then hold shift and move the scale. You can scale it along the X axis if you grab it along the edge, right about here. If I hold shift, you can see if I just pull the right direction. Ah, come on, it's a little tricky sometimes. You just gotta, <laughs> making me look bad, you gotta grab right there and then you can pull it this ways. Otherwise, you scale it along the um, X and Y at the same time if you grab it by the corner. So you just kind of want to line it up by uh, lining it up right to your road, wherever you're going to be painting. Um, I'm going to start on the end here. And what I'm trying to do is lining up the edge of the road with the edge of this road. Because if I can get some of that sort of uh, edging where you have a little bit of grass coming in and stuff, that's going to give us the best results. So I'm just going to scale this down a little bit bigger or scroll my view in a little bit as it works the same way. Um, just to give you guys a little bigger view of what's going on, I think it's better to scroll in. And then once you have it lined up right where you want it, you're going to change your brush strength to be 100%. You can hit F to change the size of your brush. And then you can just click, and it's going to paint that texture right over your, uh, your background. So if I move there, you can see it's right there. And now what you can do to continue this texture is just move your viewport down, leaving the texture as it is, and paint again. And you can see that we have a continuing texture. So this is great for getting the uh, the basic texture and where exactly where you want it. And then we can add some more variation and stuff later on. So I'm just going to roughly paint in our road here. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you can kind of use the, uh, the edges and stuff to get it lined up approximately. And paint it all the way across here, like so. And I'm just going to go a little bit further, like so. And you can see that we have a nice tiling texture. You can do the same thing on the bottom layer here. Um, if you wanted to change the scale a little bit, again, it's just control and uh, to rotate and shift to change the scale. And then you would paint again. So this is fine and dandy for getting the same texture sort of repeating um, and getting exactly where you want it placed in your scene. But I'm just going to continue that there. But if you wanted to add some variation or if you wanted to, for example, take out part of this texture, like you didn't want that middle line all the way along here, like I'm not sure I want that. What you could do is we're going to use the clone brush. I'm going to switch right here to the clone brush. And the way the clone brush works, if I zoom in here real quick, is you can hold control and left click, and that puts the cursor there. And now whenever you brush, it's going to be brushing exactly what you have there, where your brush is. So if, for example, if I swipe along here, it's going to be swiping along here and copying it down here. So you can see that this is a good way to remove something that you don't want in your scene. You might want to change your strength to 100%, and you can go ahead and paint wherever. Now, if you want to change the fall off of the brush, that's controlled with a curve right here. So you can see we have some different default curve options, like if you want it to be sharper or um, even sharper, something like this, then the fall off is going to be less. But if you change it to something like this, the fall off is going to be really fady. So that's, this is how you get more, um, more or less like a hard brush or a soft brush, and you can control it by hand if you want, or you can just grab a, uh, a default template here. So I like to leave it right about where we had it in the center there, as it blends our textures in nicely and makes it hard to see the seams. And you can go ahead and customize your texture however you like now. Um, you might also want to change the strength a little bit if you don't want to be doing this 100%, but just kind of fading certain areas of your mesh. That works as well. And uh, yeah, it's just a great technique for getting things exactly where you want them and fading areas that you didn't like the looks of. Maybe I want to uh, fix that area right there. So I would just control right click and then place my brush exactly where I want that copied and paint it in. And you can see you can repair different parts of your texture using this technique. Maybe make my brush a little bit smaller, get rid of these lines in certain areas. Do the same thing right here with a different spot of texture. And it's just good for uh, tweaking your textures basically and getting it exactly how you want it. So that's the one method for texture painting and that works good for sections like this. But now for sections like our middle road here where we want to paint some maybe grass in, um, we're going to use a different sort of brush mapping. But before I change these settings, because I have it set up nicely for how I'm doing uh, these current textures, I'm going to switch back to my texture draw. I don't want to change these, so I want to hit the plus button, so we have a new texture draw here, 
And now I can change these without changing my other texture here. So with this one, I'm going to not use stencil, but I'm going to use, um, we'll just go with view plane as view plane is going to place the texture exactly wherever you click. And, uh, if you continue pulling it, it's going to put multiple versions of the texture. So it doesn't really work for dragging, but it works good for single clicking. So what we can do now also is we're going to hit plus to open a new texture. And over here we can open a grass texture. So I'm going to jump in here. You can see I have a grass texture right there. And I'm going to take this texture and we're going to kind of paint in the medium here. Now, again, you don't want to drag this texture. If you wanted something that you could drag, you would want to choose like a tiled. And this is just going to work nice to put a tiled version of our grass across our, our texture here. And then you can zoom in and zoom out to give it a little bit of variation in the scale. Um, but this also ends up looking very tiled. So you do need to do some uh, variations in the scale and maybe even a few different textures kind of mixed into this. But we're just going to quick do a rough version here of a nice tiled grass coming in. And you can even kind of come into your other texture there a little bit to blend it here and there. Now at this point right here, you can see our UV map is a bit stretched. If we wanted to fix that, we'd have to um, change the UV map and unwrap it a bit. Um, to do that, you would just go into your UV image editor here, find the area that's stretched right in here, and you'd have to pull these vertices apart a little bit. Um, I'm not gonna do that for this tutorial because I would have to repaint these other things, but that's just how you would fix an area like that. If you found something was stretched and you didn't want it that ways, you could fix it. But um, for this scene, I'm not going to bother fixing it. Um, if it's a close up, you would see that. But if it's kind of a distant shot, you wouldn't even recognize a stretching area like that. So now that we have this painted for the most part across, I want to add a little bit of variation. And I also kind of want to add some more detail into our curve here. So our curve where we have the, the ground kind of change from cement to grass. So to do this, I'm going to switch back to my stencil brush and I'm going to grab a new texture here. So click plus. We're going to open up another texture real quick. This one is another road here, but you can see we have some grass in the edges here. So again, these will be linked to in the description. But I'm going to take this, line it up on our curb here. You want to click image aspect with the new texture so we get the right aspect ratio there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rotate it to match. I'm going to grab the edge curb here um, and just line it up with our road here so we can kind of copy that same curb. I'm going to zoom out a little bit here. And uh, you just want to line this up with the edge of your road. We're going to add some of that detail. And uh, once you're happy with the placement of it, right about there, you're going to make your brush about the approximate size to fit in there for painting. So right about there. And then you can just go along and paint that. And you can see we're adding that texture to it. Now, this might be a little bit too strong of an overlay. So you could change the strength here as you paint it. And that will blend the textures a little bit better. Um, that's something I'm going to do and I'm going to also zoom out a little bit so my texture is a little bit larger. You could also scale up your texture either way. Um, scale or zoom out works. Usually scaling up the texture I guess is better because you have a little bit easier view of what you're working at. So I'm going to do that. Line up the edge of my road with the texture. And I don't want to put this everywhere but I'm just going to put it somewhat to kind of blend in. And uh, I need to turn my strength down a little bit more. So something like that and then just lined up with our texture there. And we can paint some of that in along our road to give ourselves some texture variation and uh, some more options on our curb. And to do the other side, you just pull it across to that texture there and paint some of that in as well. Now for an area like this where we have a curve, you could rotate your texture by hitting control, lining it up with the curve and lining up the edge of the road with that as well to kind of paint that area in and that will give you some nice results. If I take that off now, you can see we have some uh, new textures being painted on and giving ourselves some variation. Okay, so now I'm gonna open up one more texture by clicking the plus key and opening up a new texture. This is gonna be kind of a sidewalk texture. So a texture like this that might look a little bit more like a sidewalk, you can open up and I'm just going to scale it down to fit and also image aspect just to fix that right off the bat. And then this can be used to paint any sort of sidewalk you might have, um, just like your road. So you can go ahead and paint it in. Of course, you're gonna wanna change your strength to 100% when you're using the stencil tool on a new section. But uh, after painting that in, you can uh, go ahead and do any sort of modifications, blending of textures like before. And uh, 
yeah, just have fun with it. Okay, and I'm back, guys. I'm just kind of touching up my uh, texture paint a little bit with the clone brush now. As you can see, it looks okay. It's a little bit smeared here and there, so I might need to do a little bit more detail touches. But um, basically, I'm just painting a blank pavement without any sort of um, any sort of markings or anything yet, because uh, we'll want to apply our material texture. Uh, we'll want to be able to put our bump mapping and stuff to it before we apply. I'm gonna make that 100%. Before we apply the uh, the lines, because otherwise the lines are gonna affect our bump mapping and stuff. So uh, I'm just kind of touching up our texture a little bit. It looks um, okay for the most part. I mean, pavement it doesn't exactly look great, but anyway, we have like a streaky texture. You might want to switch back to your uh, stencil brush here. Grab your paint texture. Just line it up. Um, of course, you want to hit image aspect if you've changed your texture like I had, and then just kind of paint in more areas to, to fix any errors you see. Um, maybe make my strength a little bit stronger too. Uh, and yeah, that's about it. You can also kind of do like the detail cracks if you want to put just like those cracks in your texture around the different areas, depending how detailed you're getting. Um, like I said, you can even do this for like game design and stuff. So if you want to get pretty detailed, you can uh, you can paint your little cracks in and stuff, and of course your edges there as well. As you can see, I have our main area here, kind of sidewalk, and our main roads. So this is good, and we can continue painting on this now. Um, but at this point, I'm just going to call it good so we can move on, and I'm not going to do the rest of the maps here because it's all the same process, just brushing across your, uh, your texture, stenciling it, and then coming back and touching up any areas with a clone brush or by just doing more details with the stencil brush. Um, there are some different brushes here, um, and like view plane is kind of nice for touch-up as well. If I go to my, uh, eh, my second texture here, and if I choose view plane, you can kind of use this to do little bits of touch-up. Um, in different areas, you can uh, obviously touch up things like that a little bit um, along the seams. If you just click once, it's just going to put the texture there. So uh, it's good for uh, touch up. And if you want to hide like tiling effects that you might get, um, you can also do that with this brush. But you don't want to click and drag because that just gives you a really bad streaky, streaky look. Um, and then just to kind of finish these off, random is exactly like you might think. It randomizes what texture goes where. So uh, kind of cool, but not really useful for getting exactly what you want in this case. And then 3D is similar to tiled, where it's just going to tile it depending on where you are. But um, So that can also be used instead of tile, basically, but it's pretty similar in the way it works. Um, as you can see here, I have a little bit of a messy, messy paint, and I might just touch that up real quick with my stencil brush, rotating it to the right point, and then just painting in the areas that I want better. Uh, maybe adding a little bit of a crack and such. Um, so you can see how detailed you can get and how it's actually quite fun um, painting your own map. You want to remember to frequently, though, save your image as well. I'm going to pull it over here, switch to my UV image editor. And if you quit Blender, your whole texture paint is going to be lost. So you want to make sure that you continually go to your road texture here. You can see our texture all over our UV wraps here. And you're going to want to save it um, frequently. Just like you save your Blender project, you don't want to save your texture as well. So with that saved, though, um, I'm not going to bother doing any more texturing on our main map here before I put the lines on it. Okay, so once you're happy with your texture map, uh, minus the lines, of course, and I only have certain areas that are finished here. I didn't finish the whole area. But like I said before, I'm not going to do it all in this tutorial. I'm just going to show you guys how to do a section like this, and then you guys can continue doing as much as you want for your project. But um, at this point, before I put the lines on it, I want to show you guys how you could use this as a material. And to quickly set up our materials, I'm going to use a site online that allows you to immediately generate a normal map, a roughness map, and a displacement map. Um, and it's really easy to do it online uh, with a piece of software. So the website I'm going to use is called Normal Map Online. I'll leave a link in the description. But it basically is GPU powered and it allows you to open up a picture and then generate the displacement, the specular, and the uh, normal map of that image. So it's super handy and uh, it's great for quick results. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how you'd use this texture. I'm just going to open up my tutorial file here real quick. The image that I just saved out right here. And it will load it up for a sec. It will show us that we have 4K. It will show us the results over here. Now, um, obviously, this isn't a great result quite yet. Um, down here, we have it rotating as well. Um, I need to make this window a little bit bigger if I want it to be formatted properly. There we go. And I, want, I like to turn off the rotation because that's just kind of annoys me. <laughs> annoys me. But um, otherwise, we can go ahead and start changing some settings. 
Um, for the settings that I'm going to use, I don't want it to be crazy strong. Um, I'm going to choose environment just so we can see a little bit better lighting on how this road is going to look. And as you can see right now, we have the displacement, but it's not exactly the look I'm going for. So we're going to first start with our normal selected and return the strength way down. We want slight bump, but not crazy bump. Um, you can also adjust the level. I'm going to go up a little bit with the level. And then the blur, I found it better to go down just a little bit with. So just a little bit of blurring. Um, you can sharpen it as well, and you'll get some different results. But um, depending on your texture. So th this texture, if I zoom in here a little bit, you can see actually it looks a little bit better sharpened than blurred. But depending on your texture and the resolution of your texture, you don't want to play around with this setting. So I'm going to turn the strength down a little bit more to about 1.5. And that's looking pretty good for the normal map. I don't want anything too crazy. So then I can switch to the displacement map, and we can change the amount here. Um, this setting is pretty good on its own, but again, you have your blurring and sharpening, and you're just going to kind of want to tweak this until you get the result you like. Again, I'm going to leave this just about 9, and I can leave this one right around 0, as it doesn't really need any more contrast. 0. Then we have our specular. I'm just going to skip the ambient occlusion, because I don't really need that. Um, and for the specular, I'm going to turn the strength way down. I don't want it to be overly reflective. Um, and you can turn your mean down as well. So we'll tweak that down a bit. In our range, you can play with the setting as well. Um, this setting gives us some interesting results, but I'm just going to leave that uh, at 1. Um, so if I zoom out here now, and if I change this to a plane to kind of see our floor, you can see we get some really strong results right now, and that's because our displacement's turned up too high. I'll take that way down. And uh, the reflectivity is still way too high. So under the specular, we're going to have to turn our strength down to zero. I'm not seeing my texture, though. Oh, that's because I have to open it. Of course, you can load in your texture here as well to get your texture mapped on there. And now it's a bit easier to see. Um, okay, and that looks a little bit better. So if I zoom in here real quick, you can see we have our texture. And now we can add a little bit of the reflectivity disk to it. Not too much, but you can see that shine that kind of looks good. Um, and you can play around with these other settings. Like I said, you don't really need to change these too much. Most of the settings are pretty good on default, but you can see it's looking pretty good when you kind of look across with the light hitting it. And then you might want to change your normal and displacement strengths just a little bit now. You can go maybe a little bit more on your normal. These settings can also be adjusted in Blender, so you don't need to change most of these too much. Um, but once you're happy with it, just kind of tweaking your displacement. And uh, just making sure I get the right sort of displacement. All right, that looks about right. This isn't really changing much, so I can leave it as it is. Um, and then you're going to choose to download all. So it's going to be PNG quality, 100% opacity, and you click download all. And it's just going to go ahead and download all of your textures to your downloads folder. You can see all four of them right there downloaded. And now I'm just going to go ahead and place them in my folder. And then I'll open them up in Blender and put them on our material. Okay, so now over in Blender, I'm just going to switch to Object Mode. We have Cycles already selected here, and I'm just going to open a new window here for our materials. Switch to Node Editor. And I also need a quick throw a background image in, a uh, environment map, that I should say, to kind of light our scene. So to do that, I'm just going to delete our default lamp there, and then go to our Environment Settings, Use Nodes. Okay, so I'm just going to open a nice sunset background from HDR Haven. Again, it will be linked in the description, but you're just going to want to open that up now. And uh, if I switch to rendered view here, I don't really have to change anything, and I'll get that nice environment texture lighting our scene. If I hit 5, you can see we have it back there. Very cool. So with that said and done, I'm just going to switch to solid view, grab our road here, and our main texture is already here. It's the road texture. It's added when we add the texture map, and I can just delete our diffuse texture, shift A, add in the principal shader, because this is all we really need for this material connect it right to the base color with this texture. And then we're just going to go Shift A and add in a few more textures. So texture, image texture, and we're going to add in those textures we just downloaded. So let me switch to viewport here, and we'll start with the normal map. So the normal map, we're going to change from color to non-color data. We're going to import, we're going to go Shift A, and we're going to drop it into a normal map. So this is going to be the strength, or the color of the normal map here, I should say. I'm going to grab the UV map there as well. Then we're going to go ahead and add a vector bump node. This is going to be the normal for the bump node. And then the bump node goes into the normal of our principal shader. 
Now I can duplicate this texture and we're going to open up the displacement map. This is going to be the height for our bump map. And now we can control this with the strength. We have our displacement and our normal, and that's all controlling the bump. So if I go to rendered view here, you can see, well, it looks a little weird because we have to connect it to the material output. But if we do that, you can see we have our road here and we have our displacement all over it. It looks pretty cool, but it is also a little bit overly strong. So I would take the strength down a bit until you get about the right amount. Now, something right around a 0.5 looks pretty cool and you get some nice looking materials. And then I'm gonna add in that last texture that I wanted, just duplicating this. We're gonna grab the specular map. And if I plug this into the specular on our principal shader, you can see now that when we kind of have the sun setting on it, you get some specular highlights on your road. And uh, you could also tweak this with a color ramp if you wanted to do more tweaking on it, but I'm just gonna leave it as it is for now. Um, if you were adding puddles or whatnot, you would want to control that also with the roughness map or a specular map. Um, if you plug this into the roughness shader, it is a bit too shiny, but if you want to tweak it with a color ramp, you could do that and use it in the roughness node here. Um, but I'm just gonna leave it plugged into the specular now, and we just have some light specular effects. So that's the main material for a road then. Um, if you want to add a material to your blocks here, it would be just as simple as taking your blocks. Um, I'm gonna shift D, duplicate it, and move it to another layer in case I wanna change it later. But for now, I'm gonna grab the one that I did not duplicate, and I'm gonna apply the skin modifier. You can just tab it, edit mode, U, smart UV project. Go ahead and do that. Just a basic unwrap job, nothing fancy. And then you could throw in a texture on it, an image texture. Again, this is um, not going to be holding up for a close-up shot, but it is more for an aerial shot or something. If you want to get more detailed, you can obviously unwrap it a little bit better and throw in a little bit more detail that way. But I'm just going to grab our sidewalk texture here, plug it into there, and then I probably will add a vector mapping. There we go. And then a texture coordinate. Input texture coordinate UV. So now I can control the amount it's repeated. So I can change that to 15, 15. And if I switch to rendered view here, it should look not too bad. So you have your texture mapped across your border there. And that doesn't look too shabby. Again, you could add more details and stuff if you want to hold up for a real close up, but I'm not, uh, I'm not concerned about that right now. Okay, so now it's time for that final part where we paint our road. This is pretty much the coolest part, I think, because we get to use some cool new Blender features. Well, not necessarily Blender, but new to me Blender features. Um, and so, yeah, it's really cool, and I'm excited to show you guys how to do this. So, we're going to switch to Textured Paint. And if your texture's looking like that, it's just because we have to switch to Slots and grab the Road Texture there, as the texture we'll be painting on. And then I'll go to Top View, and I'm going to go back to my Tools, and I'm going to go to, we'll, we'll create a new one for this. So we'll start by adding just some white lines. So to do this, we're gonna want a white material, obviously. We want a smaller brush, and we'll probably want a little bit less fadey of a brush. So I'm gonna choose something like that, as it's gonna fade a little bit less. We're not gonna want a texture, so you can click the X on the texture. Um, and we're gonna change our blend type from mix to overlay. Now doing this is going to allow us, if I give you guys a big example here, of when we paint our white, it doesn't remove the black areas. So we continue to have some detail in our white, and it looks more like paint versus just a solid white color on your uh, on your texture. So if I open up our reference image here real quick, let me just split a window here, go to UV Image Editor and grab our reference image. I guess I have to, right, it's right here. We can see some of our paint lines. Uh, and I'm just going to start with doing the basic paint line across the top. Nice and easy, a paint line, white line across the top, all the way to the edge. So, to do this, I'm going to change my stroke type from spacing, which it is right now, to line. So by changing that, I can make this smaller here now. I can zoom out here, and I can make my brush much smaller. Um, I'm going to have to make it pretty small for this, because I want to have this whole thing uh, line in view. And I'm just going to click, hold, and drag. You can see I have a line here. And then let go at the end point, and we get a nice straight line. Now that won't work quite yet, because we need to turn the strength down a bit, as this paint is probably worn a little bit and not showing up 100% bright. 
Um, and then I'm going to also zoom out and do this top line here first. So I'm going down to about two pixels for this as it's very zoomed out. And then just clicking, holding, and lining it up on the other end where we want the paint line to end and letting go. We have a nice paint line straight across. I think that might be a little bit big still. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit more, make it just one pixel. Do that one more time. Nice along the edge. And we have, well, still a little big. So I'm going to zoom in as that's going to make it a little bit smaller. And then one more time, and we have a nice line. So we can keep referencing our image here now if we want to see how the lines are supposed to be painted. Um, we, of course, have one along the bottom here as well. So let me do that one as well. And this is just using the line tool, and very simple. This isn't the coolest part, though. This is cool, but not the coolest part. The coolest part's still coming, actually. So there's another line for the bottom. Now to do the yellow lines, we're just going to change our color to be more of a yellow color. You could even use your eyedropper and pick it right off of one of these uh, textures here. If I zoom in here, it would be better. Grab this, grab that yellow color right there, and then maybe make it just a little bit more yellow, a little bit more enhanced. Okay, and then we could paint, we need a yellow line around our border here in the center. So let me give ourselves a little bit more room. We can pull this over, pull this over, and I'm just going to click and drag again right along here, except this one needs to be a little bit bigger, make the radius 2. Click and drag right around our center line there. You can see because of the UVs being messed up, we're getting a little bit of weird texturing around there, but that's fine. And then right there, we come across like so. So that's how you do those yellow lines, maybe make the opacity a little bit stronger in the future, but that's looking okay. Um, any other lines that need to be painted? Well, we have a few down here, a few up here. But those will come later. What we're going to do now is we're going to use the coolest feature, and that is, if I come down to line, I'm going to change it from line to curve. Now, this is something I've never used before, and it's really awesome. It's called draw curve. So basically, you can place some busier curves and then use those curves to paint a line in Blender. So right now, I'm going to be painting this line here. You can see it runs from this lane here to this lane here, and in the center, it's a curve where the lane switches. I'm going to zoom out here, and it's going to be right in here, between here, with the line switching, as you can see there. To do this, I have my line selected here. Let me, I lost my page here, curve. I'm going to click New, so we have a new paint curve here. Now to add a paint curve, you're going to click by holding the Control, and then you're going to left click. And if you drag it out, you'll have a busier curve, like I have here. And then I'm going to click one more time down here where I want the curve to end. And again, click and hold and drag it out. So I'm going to pull that out and get a nice sort of curve coming in here. Now with that placed, I can grab these handles and kind of adjust it exactly, exactly how I need it to be. But it's going to be something right along there. Okay, so with that curve placed, you want to make sure that you don't change your view too much because if you do, you will lose the, the placements that you put on the curve. So you kind of want to have your viewport set up before you paint. But with that said and done, we still have our paint settings set up here from before. And all you have to do is if I slide down here, you click Draw Curve, and it will paint those lines right across the curve you have uh, drawn. So it's really awesome to get those precise curves right where you need it. And then you can kind of move it around in your viewport to adjust it a little bit. And uh, I'm going to change the scale to be a little bit bigger. And now, again, come down here, I can collapse this. And I'm just going to click paint, Draw Curve. And you can see we have the line drawn exactly where we want on our uh, on our road. So if it's not exactly how you want, you can tweak it. But I think it's looking pretty close. So I'm just going to leave it as it is now. Whoops. Click Draw Curve. And if you take a look at our reference image here, we actually have two lines right next to each other. So to do this, you just have to move your viewport a little bit. Click Draw Curve again. And you have the two lines that you need. So that is how you do that. Really cool. And this is going to be the same method we use for drawing the curves around our edges here. So to do this, I'm going to create a new curve. So I'm going to click plus. Now we have a new curve. And I want to do the white line across this corner. So I'm just going to click where we left off with that line, drag it out. We had our busier curve. Then I'm going to click up here as well. Um, I have to kind of move this viewport just a little bit. And I'm going to drag it out until we get the curve matching the angle in the road just the way we like it. Um, now we can tweak it by grabbing the handles, like so, and then grabbing this handle, 
and pulling it out until we get the right curve in our in our Bezier curve here. And then you click draw curve, except I have to first change the color to be white. Uh, and then we'll pull it down so it's not 100% white. And then ba -ba -dum, draw curve. You can see it's a little bit too small this time because of our viewport. And also a little bit off. So I'm going to pull it out. Just the size a bit. We have to experiment with this just a little bit until we get the right size. And then click draw curve. That was too fat. Um, maybe 8 pixels would be good. And that looks almost right. Just a little bit too big still. And this curve needs to come out just a tad. Like so. Let's try that. Okay. And then we'll make this about 6. And draw a curve. And there you have it. We have a nice sort of curve. I'm going to go just slightly smaller still, actually. We'll go 5. Line that up right where we want it. Just using G to move it. And uh, that looks pretty good. Now to do the other side. Uh, I'm actually not sure if this will work. But maybe we could just grab it. Scale along the X to minus 1. Nope, you can't do that. Scale along the X to minus 1. Oh, it does work. So you can actually just flip it just like that. I wasn't even sure if that would work. But, uh, of course, Blender's there to save us. It does. And we can just do the exact same thing on the other side. Draw curve. And get the curve right where we want it. So um, that is how you paint paint the lines in Blender. So um, at this point, you could do more curves. We have some curves down here. I want to grab this same angle. Rotate it around. Place it where you want it. Um, I found this to be really, really intuitive, though, and really handy for a lot of these situations where uh, I wasn't sure how you would exactly paint something like this in Blender, but uh, of course there is a way to do it. Where there's a will, there's a way. And so this way worked quite well. And now we can grab that again, scale along the X minus one to flip it around to the other side, and we can draw that curve as well. Okay, that's looking, uh, looking okay. And then uh, to do the rest of it, you would change it back to line. And you would click, and you would change your brush a little bit too, just to be the right size. Click and drag, and do your lines, like so. I have to zoom out a little bit to do this whole line. But uh, that is the process, guys. So I'm going to do that one. I'm not going to continue bothering you guys by showing you all of this. You can fill in the little gaps here by uh, switching it to just a normal space brush and painting it in where it needs a little bit more. But um, yeah, I'm not going to bother showing you guys how to do all these lines now. Uh, the last thing would be like the lines in the middle of the road here. Um, if you check your texture here, we have this. So you do the same thing using the line tool. Oops, line tool. Thank you. Make it a little bit smaller and then doing the same thing where you uh, put your lines down. That's a little bit too small. Crank that up to about four. And uh, it's going to take just a little bit of experimenting to get the right spacing and stuff. But um, lines in roads aren't exactly perfect, if you've noticed, either. So um, it's not that big of a deal if they're not 100% exact. But uh, yeah, this works really well to get your lines drawn out however you like. Now these are getting a little big. Make them a little bit smaller. And uh, the next thing would be the markings, where you have, for example, an arrow, like right here. Um, there's also a white line right above it, so I can go ahead and add that. It's kind of in line with this yellow line. That looks pretty good. Maybe just a little bit higher. Okay, so that's how you do something like that. Okay, so switching back to my stencil brush, I'm going to grab a new texture. So click plus, switch to our brush texture over here, and open up. And this texture is just a bent arrow. Again, I'll include it in the description, and we want to correct the image aspect ratio on it again. But I'm just going to zoom in here, and let's give ourselves some more room. Jeez, getting a little claustrophobic here. Okay, that's better. And uh, let's just scale it down, zoom in here. And we want our arrow to be placed right inside this lane to show that it's a turn lane. So if I was to paint this, though, just like that, we would have the black in it, and it wouldn't look the way we want it to. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to change our overlay to lighten. I'm going to make my brush a bit bigger. And now when you paint over it, it's only painting the bright marks. So you can see you can go ahead and stencil any sort of marking you need. I'm going to turn the strength down just a little bit so it's not 100%. You can go ahead and stencil any sort of texture you need right onto your road for something like the lines and arrows like this. So just doing that, um, I think it should be a little bit towards the end of this line here, like that. 
gives you the uh, uh, control to do this sort of markings like that. And then you can go ahead and rotate it, because I believe we have another one over here. And so you rotate it right there, paint it right in, and uh, voila. Um, this one is a little bit too big over here, I think, actually. So I'd place it where I want, scale it down a little bit, right about so. Get the rotation right, paint it. And then without changing the scale, so we have it consistent, I would do the same thing over here. And then I believe we have a line as well that would go underneath it. So you guys would switch to this, grab your line tool, make it smaller, uh, make sure the overlay is set to overlay still. And just like this line here, we could actually copy that size. We would put another straight line underneath that, like so. So um, that is how you get, uh, paint custom lines in Blender. So I hope you guys found this tutorial somewhat fun. Um, I think I'm getting to the end of it now because I think you guys know where to go from here. Um, there are some lines in here as well. If you checked our reference image real quick, you would see ba -bum, that up here. Whoops, that's not my reference image. There we have it. You can see that up here we have these sort of lines as well coming across the road. So you guys can go ahead and do those. Same sort of techniques um, with the line overlays. Now, you can also use the other techniques to kind of straighten up the, the clone brush to kind of straighten up these areas as well if you need to do those kind of tweaks and adjustments. Uh, I'm not going to bother wasting your time showing you guys how to do all that. So I'm going to stop it there and I'm just going to show you guys if you want to open this texture back up. Of course, you would save it here. Bum, bum, bum. Road texture. Image save texture. And then you would have to go to your node editor over here. Let's just give ourselves some more room node editor and just open up your color texture. You don't have to change the other textures unless you're going to change the um, the road and then you'd have to obviously. But in this case, we just open up our road texture again. And if we switch to rendered view, close that off, we'd have our lines on our road like so. And it's looking, uh, it's looking really cool. So that's the end of the tutorial guys. Um, that's how you do it. So I hope you guys have learned something had some fun along the way, create some cool roads, or maybe add some cool environments to your textures or scenes, I should say. Um, but yeah, that's it. Hope you guys had fun. Be sure to subscribe and like the video, blah, 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 if you liked it all. And I'll see you guys in my next Blender tutorial. Bye-bye.